Hello, chem students. Ryan here to tell you what you need to know to perform the determination of concentration experiment. Let's begin by talking about why you're doing this lab and how the technique you'll use to go about it works. The why is fairly straightforward. You're going to determine the concentration of dye in a solution. To help me explain the theory behind how you'll do this, I've got two glasses of some kind of blue drink here that I made by adding a powdered mix to each glass. But I didn't make these drinks the exact same way. One of these glasses has more powdered drink mix in it than the other. If you wanted to know which one had more mix in it, you could tell just by looking at them and seeing which one is darker. In this case, the darker one is the one that moved to the top. It has more blue dye in it, and so when light passes through the two glasses, it absorbs more of that light and that makes it look darker. The take home message is that by seeing how much light a solution absorbs, you can tell whether its concentration is higher or lower than in other solutions. The technique you're going to use relies on the same concept, but it takes it a step further. Instead of just looking at a solution with your eyes, you'll use one of these here devices, a spectrophotometer, to measure its absorbance, which is a number that tells us how much light the solution absorbs. The higher the absorbance, the bigger the number. Once you know that, you can use a chart like this one to translate the solution's absorbance into a concentration. These plots of absorbance versus concentration are called Beer's Law plots. If, for example, we had a solution with an absorbance of 0.43, you'd put that here on the y-axis, then come straight over to the best fit line, then go straight down, and see what concentration you got. In this case, the line goes to about 0.057, so the solution's concentration is 0.057 moles per liter. Note that you don't have to use the plot itself this way to get concentration from absorbance. You can use the best fit line equation instead. There's one more thing I wanted to say about Beer's Law plots that will be important for you to know about when you go to make yours. As you can tell from our example graph here, a solution's absorbance has a linear relationship with its concentration. However, this relationship only holds up to a point. See, as a solution's concentration increases to somewhere past an absorbance of 1, the absorbances we measure begin to diverge from a linear line. For the example shown in this graph, if we tried to measure a solution with a concentration of 0.23, we should theoretically get an absorbance of 1.76 or so. However, because this concentration goes past where the relationship is linear, our spectrophotometer would say the solution's absorbance is only a little more than 1.4. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because when you go to make your own Beer's Law plot, you will have to look at how your data points lie and decide which points should be included and which need to be excluded so your graph is linear. If you're not sure which to leave in and which to leave out, check your plot's R squared value. This way you can be reasonably sure your line is good enough to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. Okay, now let's look at what you'll be doing in lab. One of your first tasks will be to take the data you'll need to make your Beer's Law plot. To get it, you're going to need six solutions of known concentration that you'll make by mixing some stock solution together with some water. The amounts of these that each solution will need will be in a table in your procedure. As you can see, this table gives you ranges of volumes instead of specific exact quantities. The first solution, for example, says it needs 2 to 3 mils of stock. What this means is you can add anything in that range and your solution will still be good. The nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about dispensing a certain specific volume of stock for each solution. Now, to make your first four solutions, you'll use a burette to add various quantities of stock to volumetric flasks, and then bring these solutions up to the flask's rated volume with GI water. Just be careful not to go past the flask's index line when filling them, and make sure to mix them thoroughly by inverting 20 to 30 times. To make your last two solutions, you'll mix different amounts of stock and water together in test tubes. Again, you'll use burettes to dispense these. Speaking of the burette, if you're not familiar with using one, see the part of the lab measurements video where I go over it. There will be a link to it in the description below. And keep in mind a part of your grade will depend on how well you use it. Once you've got your solutions made, the next thing you'll do is measure their absorbances with a spectrophotometer, which you'll control with a small computer. Before you can use your spectrophotometer to measure anything, you have to calibrate it. Start by plugging the computer's power wire in and turning it on. If it asks you about an auto recovery file after it boots up, just press cancel. Next, connect the spec and computer together with a USB cable. After a few seconds, the computer will figure out it's attached to something, and you'll get a big red box on the screen. 
click on the box and select Calibrate. You'll get some message about a dark sample, then a countdown timer will start for the lamp to warm up. While you're waiting for the countdown timer to finish, you can prepare a blank cuvette and put it in the spec. To do this, fill a cuvette about two-thirds full of water, wipe its sides down with a chem wipe to make sure you get all the fingerprints and dirt and junk off it, then put it in the sample holder, making sure you have it in the right orientation. As soon as the lamp has finished warming up, finish the calibration by pressing uh, Finish Calibration, then click OK. Now it's time to analyze the solution. Start by filling a cuvette with solution, put it in the sample holder, and press the play button on the computer screen. Give it a second to finish the reading, then press stop. What you'll get is a graph with absorbance on the y-axis and light wavelength on the x. You can check the absorbance at any given point by clicking on a part of the graph and or using the keys at the bottom to move back and forth along it. What you want to do here is select the wavelength your solution absorbs best at. Once you've made your selection, Click on the meter button to go back to the meter screen, then select Mode, and change the mode to Events with Entry. The red box on the meter screen should now display both the absorbance of the solution and the wavelength you're taking this measurement at. If you need to, you can manually change the wavelength by poking the box and selecting Change Wavelength. Your spec measures absorbance in real time, so all you have to do to measure a solution's absorbance is insert a cuvette of it into the spectrophotometer and read the absorbance it gives you. Do this to measure the absorbance of each of the solutions you made, as well as the straight, undiluted stock, and DI water. After you've done that, measure the absorbances of the known and unknown solutions. And that's pretty much everything you need to do to collect your data. As always, before you leave, make sure you dispose of all waste solutions in the proper container and clean up your glassware. For the burette, rinse it several times with the DI water and leave it with its valve open.